Right then guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Toon Tuesdays, your weekly roundup of Newcastle United news. Hope you guys have all had a good start to the week and enjoyed the weekend. If you're a Newcastle fan, and you probably are if you're watching this, uh, you probably did have a good weekend because Newcastle picked up another three points against Brighton on Saturday at St James's Park. That is eight games unbeaten. That is five wins in six and that is seven points ahead of the relegation zone now. I've been saying this in every video, but it was a big game at the weekend, and it was an even bigger three points for us. Uh, so we will talk about that Brighton game a little bit to start things off. I will end the video talking about the two games we've got this week, because we've got Southampton on the Thursday, and then we also have Chelsea on the Sunday as well. In terms of news coming out this week, one big thing that I think everyone's talking about at the moment is the Trippier interview that he did with the True Geordie, which I have watched the full thing, by the way, and it is fantastic, to be honest. So if you haven't watched it yet, I would suggest that you go and do so. We will talk about a few things he said in that. And the news that's come out in the last 24, 48 hours... I think it was initially reported by uh, the Times and then there's a few other sources are coming out now. And it's the fact that Newcastle are looking to have a summer overhaul uh, with, t with players leaving. And seven players specifically are reported to be leaving this summer. Um, so we will get into all of that. You can let me know your thoughts on that, uh, on those players, whether you think we should be keeping them, whether we should be letting them go this summer. We will get all into all of that in this video. So as I said... Three points against Brighton at the weekend. A massive three points and a great 2-1 win. I say great. It was great that we won. We did not play the best game. I mean, if we're being honest, Brighton came out the blocks way quicker than we did. They had all the ball for the first ten minutes. But then, thank God, we scored two goals in four minutes. Uh, Fraser with the first after Murphy hit the post. And then Shaw with the second uh, with a great headed goal. And then, you know, first half we were we were in and around it. The second half was, was pretty stretched, but generally um, Brighton got the goal. And I think they had about 70% possession in that game, which, you know, considering the way we've been playing recently, we've held the ball way better. Um, we've had a lot more control in games. I would say generally Brighton had a, had a lot of it. They got their goal, and it was the first time in a while that I've gone in the last 10, 15 minutes of a game and gone... Oh dear, you know, can we can we hold on? But, but you know, thankfully, not only did Shaw score a goal, but he actually had a great game at the back alongside Dan Byrne, who again has been fantastic for us. And you talk about holding on at the end of games, you know, it's performances like we're seeing from them to against Brighton, which is exactly what we need. When we're up in the game, things aren't quite going our way, and we need to hold on. Them two were, were brilliant. I won't bang on about it because I think it's already becoming old news, but Kieran Trippier did his interview with the True Geordie, which is fantastic, by the way, if you haven't watched it. Uh, not only Trippier talking about Newcastle, but just hearing about his time at Spurs, uh, at Atletico Madrid. I mean, it's great to hear like the, the background of, of any footballer, really, but specifically Trippier, and specifically talking about Newcastle, one part that stood out for me, and this has been tweeted out a number of times, is, you know, if we stay up, we need to build and build, build again, and then go for the title, which, you know, is, is crazy. Again, you know, as a Newcastle, long-term Newcastle fan, uh, I've still got my feet firmly on the ground and I do think that things won't happen overnight but it just shows where the players are where the confidence is right now F first of all saying if we stay up so that does show that he has got his feet on the ground as well and that that is the main concern right now is to stay in the Premier League this season but pushing past that you know in in theory the, the sky's the limit and where can we go next so yeah it's, it's great to hear what Trippier has to say and again a player that people are already talking about is potential captain future captain of, of what he has been able to help and do since he joined the club as well um so yeah I doubt it needs any more prom promotion to be honest but if you haven't seen it it is a great watch Newcastle are set to offload seven players worth 70 million in a huge overhaul before Eddie Howe's summer transfer spree. 
That wasn't easy to say. Uh, that, that is the news that is coming out again in the last 24, 48 hours. Specifically, those seven players listed are Miguel Miron, who has already been linked with a move in the summer. Again, he hasn't had much game time, and I think the fact that we're seeing you know, Murphy playing while St. Max is out shows that he's not... Um, Eddie Howe's favourite right now. Dwight Gale, someone who I think I was surprised when we left a couple of players out of the squad in January that he was a player who actually kept his place in the squad. Although he is our only fit striker behind Chris Wood, he hasn't he hasn't played. So regardless of whether he's our only fit striker behind Wood or not, I was still surprised that he kept his place. Jamal Lewis, now he was actually a player that I was surprised to not keep his his place in the squad because again I thought behind target maybe Lewis would be would be second but Eddie Howe clearly didn't feel that way. Um, Isaac Hayden was a player who was left out due to injury, but again we've seen how well the Shelby Joe Linton Willick pairing has pairing treble has gone down. Uh, and now with Bruno on the bench and Eddie Howe has come out and openly spoken about the fact that he's a big fan of Sean Longstaff as well. So straight away we've kind of got quite a few midfielders there. Uh, Kieran Clark, um, that was a player who I wasn't surprised to see lose his place in the squad. Again, he was he's, he's worked hard for us over the years and I don't want that to go unnoticed. Especially you know, at the time in the championship and generally he was quite reliable over the years. But I just think... He, his legs have, have, have gone and he's not quite where where we need him to be anymore. Emil Kraft is on this list as well, despite having played the last three games in a row for us now and being all right as, as far as I can tell. I mean, he is, in for me, behind in the order to both Trippier and Mankio. And if we're potentially going to look at bringing in another right back, then I guess that would make sense for maybe for him to be the one to go. And finally on that list is Carl Darlow. As well, I think goalkeeper is a position that Eddie Howe looks to be wanting to strengthen as we had links to both Leno and Henderson in the January transfer window. You would say that Dubravka's number one and although again, although Darlow's done us all right in the past, um, I think he's 30 now, you know, so he isn't actually the young goalie that some people still think he is because I did for a while. Um, and with Woodman potentially coming through the ranks as well, so you can see why we would probably want to drop a goalie too. So those are the seven players that have all been linked with moving out in the summer. Let me know your thoughts on them down below, whether you'd like to keep some of them, whether you think it's right for them to go. For me, I can see some big changes coming this summer. And although it's slightly strange that this has been, I shouldn't, it's not released or anything, this is just reported in the news, so who knows what's true or not true and probably not true, but, um, Although I'm surprised it's coming out in March, I'm not particularly surprised to hear that people might be going, to be honest, because we brought in five players in January. We, three of those players haven't even made the squad because we already didn't have enough room for them. So it only makes sense that not only them, but probably more will have to go if we are going to want to spend again in the summer. And you think we bought five players in January, how many players might they want to try and buy in the summer as well. So, as I say, it's quite strange for this news to be coming out in March. But again, we want to have a game plan. You know, if we want to have some of these players lined up to leave on day one of the summer window, it will make things much easier in the summer to bring new players in. So, yeah, I, I guess in that sense you can see it as to how quickly can we organise stuff looking right ahead of the window so we can be extremely prepared once we get to the summer. Something that I didn't mention at the start but I will mention now is that Amanda Staveley collected the North East Football Writers Association Player of the Year award on behalf of Alan St Maximan on Sunday uh, and she did while she was there talk about how extraordinary Eddie Howe has been um, and I, I won't disagree to be honest because I think he's been fantastic and she also joins the list of Callum Wilson, Ryan Fraser and Trippier most recently on the True Geordie podcast to talk about the fact that the team was not fit under previous management. So, you know, it, it, I think it's been well documented at this point uh, that the players were not particularly impressed with the previous management. I think uh, Fraser speaking out um, 
in his interview in, in Trippier, he kind of spoke about the fact that the other players have told him the same thing about the days off. But Amanda Staveley herself has now come out and commented on the exact same thing. So it's it's fair to say, you know, that, it, that the change was, was definitely needed. Uh, if we didn't already know that, you know, um, and Eddie Howe has, has clearly made a, a massive impact on what's going on here and not only convinced the owners, but the, but the players themselves. And it's shown on the pitch. And that and that's one of the biggest things, you know, or, or the biggest thing, you know, is to show on the pitch, pick up the points and, and, and do the work. And we will finish off talking about, as I say, the Southampton game this Thursday, pushing on to the Chelsea game on Sunday. So two games this week, both away from home. It's looking increasingly likely that Newcastle will actually have four away games in a row now. It'll be Southampton Thursday, Chelsea Sunday, Everton next Thursday, which again we'll talk about next week. It was then meant to be Crystal Palace next weekend, but that's been postponed because of Crystal Palace's FA Cup. And then it's Spurs in just under a month's in just under a month's time, and that's away as well. So four away games in a row. But talking about Southampton this Thursday to start things off, big up to all the fans who are going down there because let's be honest, it got moved at the last minute. And it's literally the like the farthest game away of any Premier League team. Um, so big up to everyone who's going down to that one. Southampton themselves have been on relatively good form. The reason I say relatively is because picking up in the second half of the season, they've played really well. But they went and lost themselves 4-0 against Aston Villa at the weekend, which was a shock to me. And I'm hoping, you know, with what has been quite good form for us, that maybe we can capitalise on that and try and hit them while they've, while they've had a bad game. Having said that, you know, our form has been pretty good recently, but previous to them losing 4-0, they had gone five games and beaten themselves. They had won three of the last four. And as I've said, have been playing some good football. They have the home advantage. It's a long journey for us. And I think we'll be quite a tough fixture so let me know your thoughts on that one down below following what i think will be a very tough game against southampton as i say we then push on and play chelsea on the sunday it'll actually be interesting to know whether the players are and eddie howe are planning to come back up from southampton for a day or two and then going back down again or whether they'll actually look to try and find a training area and accommodation down there so they're not having to move up and down so much but again going into that chelsea game i think will be another tough one and you know what it is and the form we're on I'll back us to beat anyone but I do think you know maybe a draw there would not be a bad result to be honest and that is where I'm going to leave today's video guys so quite a lot today I think it's good, probably going to be quite a long one so I hope you have enjoyed it and if you are still watching but you haven't subscribed yet be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn the notifications on because there will be plenty of videos this week with all the football for Newcastle coming up as I say thanks for watching like subscribe hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you later